Laura, you you call yourself uh, a permanent migrant, mm-hmm. and uh, you've also done some research, mm-hmm. research quite mm-hmm. a lot of research mm-hmm. on migration and migrant workers, and you wrote your dissertation on that topic too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me a little bit about that and your work mm-hmm. on migration. Well, I um, it was 15 years ago when I was in the um, Caribbean. I happened to be working in a an NGO that was doing AIDS prevention, and it was uh, on an island where many people migrate, and um, and it was considered normal. And um, a lot of the people were were women who were going to come to Europe, and they were either going to be maids. This a lot of it was in Spain, but all over Europe, and a lot of them were going to sell sex. And there was a, and these were going to be undocumented situations, and we understood that that's what people were doing. And um, and then eventually, I realized that there was this huge problem uh, from people in Europe who thought that this was terrible and that this was a tragedy and that <clears throat> these were all victims. And I couldn't understand. Why people didn't? Why I thought, well, why don't aren't the Europeans talking to the migrants? Don't they know I mean, these kind of innocent questions? And one thing led to the other, and I decided to do a. I did a master's degree, and I did research in in Madrid, in Spain, with migrants and and people who were trying to help them, and I had a lot of, uh, I was studying the people who were trying to help them. I thought, why? They, <laughs> they're not, they're treating them all like victims and they're not all victims. And so why don't they the, know that? You claim that they are not victims. Yeah, it's not Explain a cl- that. It, yeah, it's, yeah it's, not a, it's not a claim and it's not like um, it's all one or the other. Um, I give a lot of uh, weight to what people say about themselves. So that, I suppose that's some kind of bottom line. So it's not an ideological question for me. If people tell me that they preferred to do one thing to another because sell that's, sex, sell sex, or be a maid, or pick you know strawberries in the south of Spain because they didn't like the other options or they thought it might work out, then I take that to be what they mean and that I'm willing to say okay so you those you had only a few options but you took one of them you know so the question is do, are you trying to get out of it now are you trying to stay are you trying to what are you trying to do so that was my very grounded very pragmatic kind of view and it, this view runs into a high anxiety amongst people who think that there's something wrong with something wrong with being a maid with something wrong with selling sex that this is violence that people shouldn't leave home they should be they should stay that there shouldn't be any undocumented people. And so I found myself living in these places where, okay, in Sweden, there aren't so many as in the UK, but there are undocumented people. They are everywhere. They come across the bridge, but they also come in the (laughs) airplanes. And they, you know, and it's easy to become undocumented. It's quite easy. Um, I've been so myself in Spain. It just, that's what happens. Things don't work out. And so then you end up being slightly irregular. And and so I had this point of view and it turned into an enormous, an enormous topic. And it turned into a, a thesis that became a book that has become rather well known and 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 there are very few people who talk about the What's situation. What's the name of your book? Sex at the Margins, Migration, Labor Markets, and the Rescue Industry. And the rescue industry is, in fact, the... The social workers? That's the, well, It's everybody. It's everybody yeah. who has the idea of um, helping people. So it's social workers, a lot, a lot of academics, people in, who feel that they're in solidarity, people who want a no-borders movement, people who are in government, who feel that they are deciding on policy that will be best. That, that was the concept that I, my book is really about that has caused a big stir because it asks questions about the people who consider themselves to be transparently good with good intentions and trying to help. And I asked questions about, well, what, you know, what are you doing? If if those people don't want that, why are you trying to force them? You're just going to deport everyone. So this has turned into kind of a... 
big but stir. Bottom line of mm-hmm. what you're saying is that people are empowered generally to decide for themselves. Mm-hmm. It's not, I don't, people then immediately say, oh, this is this neoliberal horrible thing about choice. I didn't use the word choice. I think that the planet is extremely, on it's, the structural inequalities are horrendous. It is a patriarchy everywhere. The situation is not fair. However, some people given a poor number of choices decide to leave home. They decide, they, <laughs> it's not a beautiful free choice, no. But given the options and the information that they had and what they were able to fantasy and Im- fantasize and imagine about themselves, so it's not everyone who would leave. It's obviously people with a certain kind of profile as well. So they're able to take more risks, able to think about, okay, I could go to Sweden. I don't know the language, but maybe I'll be able, I'll be able to do that. So it... It it requires a number of kinds of conditions to make it possible. So given that, okay, it's very risky. A lot of bad things can happen, but they don't always happen. And a lot of people get through a year or so and manage to find their way or find a husband or find a job and become legal or cross another border or get fed up and go home. And so it's all that kind of variety and the kind of ordinariness of these people as opposed to being melodramatic victims of of poverty and exploitation that I when I talked I've talked to thousands of migrants it's very rare for someone to talk about themselves that way so to me it's a matter of respect as well that if you tell me that you you're proud to have got as far as you did and that life is hell right now but maybe it'll get better then I'm Congratulations, that's good then. What you else would you like? That. Yes. Well, it, but it's a, then it's, if you're going to know that person, then it's a longer conversation about, so what are, do you, I mean, if I were trying to help someone, which I'm not really, then I would say, so is there, what is it you would like? Are you trying to, are you trying to get anything that you don't have? Are you unhappy with your job? Do you, what are your, and then you will hear people's problems and it probably won't be about selling sex or about the cold in Sweden it it'll be yeah how can I just like me how can I fit in better here how can I yeah I'd like to have more fun I'd like to not I don't want to be illegal how can I you know could I find a husband or a wife or you know how fair enough but Mm. uh my interpretation of what mm. you're saying is mm. that it's extremely controversial mm. in the Swedish and mm. maybe uh, European context mm. to say what you are saying. It seems to be quite controversial, but yeah. there are a lot of people who agree with me. Um, but because it's become so symbolic about the sex, many people don't want to talk about it in public. And that certainly would be true in Sweden. It's, it's uncomfortable. Of course, I gave a talk in Copenhagen the other day. And as you know, the Danes think that they are extremely different from the Swedes <laughs> and much more open and much more able to talk about these things. And so the whole room was full of people who were more or less willing to go along with my kinds of ideas. So why was that? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I also know people in Sweden who find it easy to talk with me, but, they, but you won't hear it on mainstream television. You won't, you won't see it in Doggins New Hater. It's, these are top points of view that I don't know whether, I don't know how to, why is it? Are people just afraid to be associated with ideas that seem unpopular or that it will maybe they are just afraid afraid yeah